Hey, good morning, everyone. And uh, I am an admiral. I hopefully try to be admirable. So thank you very much. It is an honor to be here on this panel today. And I uh, would be remiss if I did not thank our host uh, country here for their leadership uh, on Arctic issues. Uh, I would also say for their incredible hospitality. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, being in this beautiful country, in uh, this very beautiful city of this very beautiful country. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the importance of the issues we're talking about here. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why is a Coast Guard officer talk fit in the discussion about future Arctic business. And that really has to do with uh, our role across the spectrum of the marine transportation system, the marine maritime operations and governance. For those not familiar with the United States Coast Guard, is kind of a unique organization within our government. We have about 60,000 people. We're in part of the Department of Homeland Security. We're military service, but we're also a regulatory law enforcement and humanitarian agency at the same time. We work very hard to be a trusted, competent maritime partner who exemplifies the best at international norms and moving forward some of the opportunities and the challenges in Arctic maritime governance and operations. We've been active in the Arctic since 1867, and today we partner with Arctic nations on issues ranging from search and rescue to fisheries management to law enforcement to science and we conduct exercises and even join operations. Like all areas of the Arctic, our U.S. Arctic is changing. Our Alaska residents and First Nation peoples are striving to sustain their culture. And this drives us all to collaborate to help mitigate risks, evolve resiliency, and foster prosperity. And as our Arctic activity changes, whether that's increased shipping routes, whether that's increased tourism or ecotourism or cruise ship activity, Given the tyranny of distance, we are challenged to execute our mandate to advance security in terms of safety, sovereign rights, and stewardship. The Coast Guard advocates and works to achieve a rules-based system grounded in traditional maritime governance, practice, and open dialogue. And given our very long history and long and proud history of saving those in peril at the sea, I was asked to talk a little bit about search and rescue and other types of response in the Arctic as human and commercial activity continues to increase. So I will tell you that uh, last year, the Viking Sky incident here, disabled near Norway, was 40 knots of wind, I think about 25 foot seas, eight meter seas. Not in the Arctic, but in some high latitudes. Um, as a maritime professional, I mean, someone has been doing this for 35 years, I was amazed at the feats of the folks that got the 460 people off that ship. But it is a reminder of the challenges of operating um, in these types of environments. And when you think of search and rescue, whether it's search and rescue, or you think of marine pollution, environmental response, particularly environments as the Arctic, um, you must think about prevention first. And what I mean by this, by way of example, is the Coast Guard has been a leader in bodies such as the International Maritime Organization. Um, that developed international standard for design, construction, equipment, and training for ships operating in polar waters, known as the Polar Code. We also worked with the Russian Federation to propose to IMO to establish a two-way traffic in the Bering Straits that was adopted. These are but two examples of prevention activities. On the response side, we exercise. We have a series of exercises in Alaska every year that go from our national level down to the village level. We support, support research and development, particularly with our icebreakers. We also conduct joint operations and exercise with our Arctic partners. We recently published and updated our Arctic strategy, which reaffirms our commitment to the region and our need to have capabilities, capacity, and infrastructure to protect the U.S. national security and economic security in the interest in the region and work with our partners to ensure recognized, established norms are followed. There is no doubt for us that readiness in the Arctic requires presence and the, for the United States Coast Guard, the foundation of presence for us is our icebreaking fleet. Currently, we have two. One heavy icebreaker, which is currently on its way to Antarctica to support science in Antarctica. We have another medium icebreaker that recently concluded a science mission and search and rescue and law enforcement in the Arctic. Last year, we awarded a contract to build a new icebreaker, a heavy icebreaker. We're going to plan to build six with at least three of them being heavy. 
and a strong presence in the Arctic will allow us to contribute leadership and support commensurate with the expanding interest in the Arctic, its natural resources, and its potential as a transportation corridor between Asia, Europe, and North America. We will continue to work with like-minded partners to lead across the U.S. and international landscape to promote co collaborative leadership and dialogue, ensuring the Arctic domain remains an area of low tension, high attention, and great cooperation. Thank you very much. I look forward to the discussion.